Hi everyone, Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and I'm going to be showing you how I created this really fun pop-up card using coaster critters, some bunting borders, and a little bit of fun with the mini ink cubes. To start out, I have a piece of a Nina Solarite cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I also have trimmed down a piece of the really rainbow paper pack and also this green piece from Watercolor Wishes. So the top half will be my sky, the bottom half will be my grass and where I'll put my sentiment. Then I'm going ahead and die cutting out the stitched hillside from Cilantro cardstock. And I'm just going to lay that down to kind of give me an idea how this is gonna look. I'm also taking a scrap piece of Cilantro cardstock and cutting out some of the hillside borders so I can have that in the background of my card. And then I just kind of line everything up. This is before I hear it, everything to make sure I, if I wanna layer any pieces. So I just lay this out to give me an idea. Now here you can see there is a score line. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, score this and fold that over. I'm pushing from the back, actually with my fingernails or you can use your fingertips, just to go along that line and then I can crease that down, and that is going to be what attaches to the bottom portion of my card. And then I'll just come in with a bone folder and give that a really nice good crease. And kind of setting that down to give me an idea how this is gonna look. The die also cuts out all the score lines to fold over to attach that pop-up to your card and I just kind of maneuver things how I'm gonna want it to look with my card. Now, one of my hills I had created kind of disappears in the background there. So to get a better idea, I'm gonna go ahead and fold in my pop-ups so that I know exactly how this is gonna look, how much room I'm gonna have, what disappears in the background or what I don't need. So you can see I'm just folding those over and popping those up. And I did leave this part in regular time so that you could see how exactly those fold over. And so one of them I decided was just gonna, it was gonna disappear, it wasn't, didn't need to be there. Now I can go ahead and attach my backgrounds because I'm not gonna do anything else to these. So I can attach this really rainbow piece to the top portion for my sky. And I like to make sure I continue to fold my card so that I know none of my edges are overhanging on those crease lines and that it'll fold up nicely. So I have my watercolor wishes and my rainbow in the background. And then I can take my pop-up mechanism and line up how that is gonna look. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the stitched hillside, but I'm not putting adhesive at the very top. That way, if I wanna tuck anything behind it, which I eventually do, I have that wiggle room. But the bottom portion of it is attached. Now I'm attaching that flap to my card using some double-sided adhesive. This is a really strong adhesive, so I know it's gonna hold really well. And I'm also putting a little bit on the portion of the pop-up that's gonna be attached to the card. So I'll go ahead and line that up with the crease in the middle of my card. Fold that over, making sure that I have that lined in perfectly. And then you can see I'm kind of folding that up. I'm pushing that back hillside in. And then my skinny strips, I can fold down. And this is how I'm going to attach those to my card. So I'll remove those backings. And then I can fold my card over and those are gonna attach perfectly. So when you open it up, you'll have that hillside pop up. Now the back portion doesn't go all the way down to the card. So there is a little bit of that rainbow paper pack sticking through, but when you look straight on at the card, you're not even gonna notice. Now I have all my images stamped out that I think I'm going to use on my card. I actually don't end up using all of them, but these are all from the Coaster Critter stamp set. 
I knew I wanted the roller coaster scene so I have all of those ready to go and then I'm going to color them with my Copic markers. I did use the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp these out because that is Copic friendly. For the roller coaster I'm using R29 and I just go through and lay all the color down. I'm not going to worry too much about the blending because I know a lot of this is going to be behind something else because it is a pop-up so I'm going to be kind of layering my images so I'm not as concerned uh, with the shadowing at this point I just wanted to have all of that color laid down and then I also like to use my colors throughout the rest of the images so I'm doing the awning of the ticket booth and I'm doing one of the balloons and then I come in with R59 and I just add a little bit of that darker color to the edges just to bring in some depth and same thing with the balloon. Then I come in with FBG2 and B06. It was kind of a different color combination to use, so I'm doing that throughout the card. Now on these roller coasters, I didn't even do any blending. I just added the lighter color on top and the darker color on the bottom. And I'm using that through all of those little roller coasters. And then I come in with the YG17 and YG13 and I'll do a roller coaster here same thing I just had a two-toned roller coaster didn't do any blending to it and I used it also for one of my balloons to kind of tie my colors together same thing with the yellow which is the Y02 and Y38 and I actually switched where my shadows went on my balloon. So I kind of went over it a couple times to switch up where the darker side would be. Because most of the critters you can see are facing to the right. So I needed that shadow to be on the left. Now I have E97 and E08 for the fox. And since, like I said, they are facing to the right, I'm putting the shadow on the left-hand side. And I'll do that to all of the critters. And then to color up the bunny, I have E53 and E34. I thought it was a really nice light combination for the bunny. So that way I could also color the bear just a darker brown. And to have that contrast between the two. And for that, I use E35 and E37. Keeping that shadow or the darker part on the left-hand side of the critter. I also use that color combination for my ticket booth. Like I said, I like to just kind of reuse them throughout my images so I don't have a ton of markers sitting on my desk and adding just a little bit of the shadow to the ticket booth. So I put some underneath the top portion. And for my cotton candy, I used RV21 and RV14. I just love that little cotton candy. I think it's adorable. And for my stripes and my tires, I just used C4. There was no blending involved. Now I'm going to come in and I attached all the coordinating dies to the images with some post-it tape. You can see the ticket booth. It's going to cut out the window of the ticket booth so that way I can add a critter in there if I want. And some of the images I'm going to have to... Uh, do twice because I had two bears and two bunnies. I just wasn't sure what I was going to do exactly so I wanted to make sure I had plenty. And then you can see these pop out really nice. They, the post-it tape didn't leave any marks on my images or on my paper. And then I can reattach some of those duplicates that I had. Now I have all of my images die cut out and I can start layering up how I'm going to want this to go. And what's really funny actually is how I line it up now is not ending is not how the card ended up. And the reason for that is because I started the card and then I walked away and had to do some things and completely forgot how I wanted it. So one really good suggestion, especially when you have a lot of images to play with, is take a picture. You know, if you find 
something you like or that you placed somewhere, take a picture of it on your phone and then you can always reference back to where the images had gone. Either way, how the arrangement goes, it didn't really make a difference. I knew like I wanted the roller coaster in that back and I tucked it behind my hill. So that is why I didn't fully attach that hill to my card. So now I'm just going through with all of the little critters and attaching their little goodies, whether it's the cotton candy or tickets or balloon. And I'm using the lawn fawn glue to do that. And I just do this on a small post-it. That way I don't have glue all over my table and have to worry about cleaning that up. I just use this post-it. And then that way any excess glue that seeps out will just go on that post-it and I can just throw that away when I'm done. Another thing you could do is use tweezers if that would help because they are kind of smaller images so you could use tweezers to help you attach. I'm finishing off that cute little bunny with the bunch of balloons. I also have some clouds that I die cut from white cardstock and that was using the outside in stitched clouds. I think these look really adorable with that rainbow background. I like using the pattern paper. Uh, especially the rainbow paper pack for a background and for a sky. The rainbow's already there. Now I can come in and I'm just adding uh, a little bit of adhesive so I can get my roller coaster attached. And I can tuck that back behind my hill. This card was just really fun to put together because I was doing this right after we came back from a fair. So that really worked out. I had it all fresh in my mind how my carnival was going to look. And here I'm giving you a straight on view how the card is coming together so far. So this is looking really great with that roller coaster in the background and the cloud in the sky. I also had gone ahead and die cut a couple trees. I just needed a little bit of greenery with this, uh, some nature in there. And I used paper bag and noble fur. And those trees came from the stitched, stitched hillside backdrop. They had some really cute little trees in there that you could use. And you can see I had put my tree in a wrong spot. I forgot that I wanted my ticket booth down there. So I'm just rubbing off that adhesive that was there. And uh, just adding that somewhere else. I made sure the bigger tree was in the front because of when it's going to be bigger when it's closer to you. So my smaller tree will go on the background because it's further away so it'll be smaller. And then I can go ahead and put my ticket booth where it was supposed to go. I knew I wanted that down in the corner because that's kind of where the whole scene is going to start is with that ticket booth and everybody getting their tickets and then going off to have fun. And then I'm just just adding in my images. So this is kind of all personal preference where you want to add everything. I have my little bear walking away that has his ticket and I'm bringing in my other critters. I'm okay with gluing everything down right now because I'm pretty much going to be done with the scene. I'm not going to add any other dimension to it. I did bring in this little park bench that I thought was super adorable. It was from uh, one of the village collections. And like I said, just coming from a carnival at that time, I knew I wanted a park bench because you get tired walking around. You need somewhere to sit. <laughs> so I wanted to bring in that really cute park bench. And I'll have that listed here in the top where that park bench came from exactly. Then I can go ahead and add my tree. I had a little bit too much adhesive, so I just kind of rolled it down with my finger, just kind of pushed it over. That way there's no overhang of the adhesive and it's not going to stick to my card and kind of ruin the whole pop-up of it. And then just adding in that park bench by the tree so you can sit down for some shade. I was really getting into the scene. <laughs> and there you can see I'm just closing it and there it pops out. Everything came together nicely. Nothing is sticking where it shouldn't be so I'm just making sure that's creased really well. And then I can come in and I'm doing the front of the card very, very simple. I, this is why I use the white card stock for this. And I'm just adding one of these stitched circle frames. And I die cut that out of white card stock. And I'm just adding some liquid glue to attach that to the top. And I have the scripty for you that I also die cut out of the really rainbow paper pack. 
So I kept that really simple just because all the excitement's going to be in the inside of the card. And then using my tweezers to just kind of attach that, making sure my fingers were out of the way so I could keep that in the center. And that'll be the front. And then bam, you have all the fun in the middle. Now I need to create something for my sentiment in the inside. And I thought this would be really fun to add in the bunting borders. So I cut that out of the white cardstock. And there is also a die in there that'll cut out all of the little triangles. And you actually do, you cut a few of them at one time. So I actually have a lot to do for uh, future banners. So I just went through the rainbow colors. I used chili pepper, canned pumpkin, sunflower, cilantro, peacock, and sugar plum. And then I did repeat the chili pepper and the canned pumpkin at the end. And then I can just take that and add this to that inside panel and I'll go ahead and trim off the excess on the edges. That looks super adorable down at the bottom there. So now I'm going to have some fun with the mini ink cubes. So I created this banner and this is actually a banner off of the Ocean uh, Shadowbacks add-on. And I lay that down in my Misty. I'm taking one of the acetate sheets from the stamp set and I'm laying that over the cardstock. So that way I can curve my sentiment with the shape of the banner. So I'm going to do Life With You Is Thrilling. So I go ahead and just curve that with the banner. I'm going to do the same thing with the word thrilling, because thrilling, you can change these sentiments. So thrilling was separate. And I'll go ahead and stick that down on that acetate, and then I can close the cover of my Misty so that sticks. My magnet is holding down my banner, so that's not going to move. And then I just kind of double check before I do any inking, and that looks great. It curves with the banner, which is going to be perfect. making sure that's still lined up where it needs to. And then I'm going to create a rainbow with ink. So I was really into the rainbow with this card, which is great because it's so cheerful. And now I have this great assortment of mini ink cubes from Lawn Font. So I'm going to use chili pepper, pumpkin spice, sunflower, cilantro, and fish tank. And what I'm doing and this is actually pretty easy to do with the mini ink cubes, is I'm just lightly dabbing one word at a time. So I took the chili pepper and just lightly did that first word life, came in with the pumpkin spice, and just lightly did that second word. And I just keep going throughout the whole thing. And if it does overlap one of the other words, that is perfectly okay. I actually wished I would have done that a little bit more. And then you can see I just stamped that down and I have this really awesome rainbow sentiment. And I'll just go ahead and get that attached to my card. And that is going to finish up this Coaster Critters pop-up card. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And you'll take a look at creating some more fun pop-up cards with these adorable stamp sets and dies. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.